<laughs> you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Louis Hina I'm from uh, Tsuki Pueblo. I'm here to pick up a uh, 95 mass for my community and also for others that are in need. Thank you to Marianne, Joshua, and the Lemnazine Foundation for their effort in uh, caring for our communities and sharing sharing their, their mask with us. Um, Can you tell us about Tasuki, where you're located, just a little bit about your tribe? Well, you're here in Santa Fe. The Tewa name for Santa Fe is Ogapogi. So you're basically in our backyard. Um, Tasuki Pueblo is about maybe eight miles north of here. We're internationally known as a sustainable living community. Uh, people from around the world come and learn from us, um, share ideas of, of different types of plants that we grow, harvesting, seed saving, seed keeping, uh, water harvesting techniques on the, on the, land, on the landscapes. Uh, I feel basis. Let's see, we're I say we're endangered community. We're one of the smallest communities here in, in, in New Mexico. Um, we're known, I guess one of the main, main things is that uh, if you know the Pueblo Revolt, which we say was the first American Revolution, uh, the two runners that took the knotted cord running uh, two marathons in one day were from my community. Their names were Amtua and Katua. And uh, we've been celebrating the revolt at Tsuki Pueblo for the past 25 years. Uh, we run here into Santa Fe from Tsuki early in the morning. And then uh, we have ceremonies here in the, in the plaza. Um, former Mayor Koss uh, worked with us and um, there's a there's a plaza there in the city government area where it's dedicated to Antua and Kutua. Uh, former Governor George Rivera from Powaki Pueblo has been commissioned to do a bronze, two bronze pieces depicting Antua and Kutua running with a cord and uh, I think should be placed in that in that square when, when completed. And uh, once we, we leave Santa Fe in the morning, we go back home, and then we have more celebrations at home, and mostly running, running activities. Uh, we invite other communities to join in with us and, and, and celebrate. For people that don't know, to give them kind of an idea, how old would you say your culture is? Well, through archeological data, uh, been, the date's been set at 1100 AD. However, with, with new findings from here in uh, the Pueblo of Ava Fria, uh, those, those numbers have been skewed back another 10 to 13,000 years further back. <laughs> That's remarkable. One of the things we are constantly communicating to people is that, you know, in trying to help people through this pandemic, it's also trying to preserve cultures and how unique each of your cultures are. Well, uh, at Tsuki, um, we're pretty, we're very strong in, in our, our traditional ways. Mm -hmm. um, you can hear drumming all day long from different households. Uh, well, you see, mm -hmm. you, you see the, the, the kids and grandkids dancing. Uh, now, and then with this pandemic, I also learned some new things. I can go to YouTube <laughs> mm -hmm. and find Native American ceremonies and, and different songs. So within my household, seeing my grandkids not only dancing to our ways, but to other community songs and, and dances. And, that's Great beautiful. That. And I know that there's also a lot to be said about the relationship between, you know, science and environmental stewardship and your traditions. You were sharing with me earlier about fires and how your, a tradition you have could prevent fires 
and just about how the um, indigenous community is like a part of the environment. And could you share a little bit about that since people are thinking about fires? Well, we've always, we've always used fire to, to clear land, um, prepare for the next growing season. And then uh, we also have land up in the forest here, Santa Fe National Forest. So we've been up there, you know, we've been cleaning the bottom, taking out old growth, dead growth. Um, so we've experienced two fires, two major fires now. What was the first one? Do you remember the name of the first one? Pacheco. The Pacheco fire, and now the Rio and Medio fire. Um, so with our practices, our land holdings within that forest service weren't touched. Everything else around it burned, but not ours. And then now with these devastating fires there in California, you know, you're hearing it in the news about indigenous practices to control forest fires. Because the indigenous communities, their traditional knowledge base has been taken out of main so-called mainstream science uh you're, they're experiencing these devastating fires now mm -hmm. so bringing back local communities uh, native american communities back to the table along with these let's say the forest service bring those local communities native american communities sit down and consult consult with these communities and then go out and learn those practices and uh, I think with my experience people on the front lines basically help each other's out mm -hmm. it's just up the ladder you go and everything gets key Thank you so much, Louie, because I think a lot of people don't realize how an indigenous culture can intimately be part of the environment as opposed to being only a, a problem, a source of a problem. Right. So one of the things for indigenous science or traditional knowledge is observation. And uh, I'm happy that now the, the Western science is also accepting observation. Because um, I'll give an example. Uh, a young couple gets married and say they're going to build a house or put their trailer in this one spot and here come the elders and they say that's not a good place to put, put a home and they say why because it floods there so the young couple say well we've never seen it flood in our lifetime so they don't follow the advice of the elders. They build their home there. And what happens? Here comes the flood. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, should have listened to the elders. And that's very much kind of the way a lot of the indigenous communities are probably feeling about what's happening in the United States with the fires. Because you guys have been trying to tell people what to do to help prevent them for a long time. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to communicate to people? Well, this past year, we completed our 24th annual um, Indigenous Solutions Design Course. And uh, we were fortunate to have the First Nations Technical Institute uh, help uh, the Digital Native American Farmers Association put out a, a virtual course. And so this coming in 2021, we'll be celebrating our 25th annual course and uh, just to get it out there if people are interested uh, get a hold of TANAFA traditional native american farmers association wonderful well and we encourage people to do that because we've sent a lot of different indigenous leaders to your course and they always just absolutely rave about it afterwards so thank you everyone you can look at um, louie on facebook and he's doing remarkable work with the environment and human rights for indigenous communities thank you